So Chief, over time, what aspects of Amerindian culture have contributed towards the overall culture of Trinidad and Tobago? Okay. Well, in the very early days, before we are where we are today, in terms of our development and so on, all the ethnicities that would have come to Trinidad, the Africans, the East Indians, the Chinese, and all the, the other ethnicities that would have come, the indigenous culture would have had some impact on them. In the first instance, I will say in the form of housing. All right? The people who came lived in houses just as the indigenous peoples lived in, in, in tat roof, that's different palms and so on. And as time went on, they started to put the adobe or the tapia, what we call the tapia, the modern grass and so on. So that everybody, every ethnic group that came within those times lived in, in those, you know, in, yeah. in, in that setting. And after that, the, 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 the same food it here. That, that the indigenous people would have used, which was not as, as sophisticated as we have to be, um, all the other groups would have used. So that's a development. In terms of the food, the cassava was the main staple of the Amerindians of these parts, um, South America and, and the Caribbean and so on. Bitter cassava, that. And they made from it cassava bread and a cereal, which we call farine. Um, these were the two things they made from it. And from the juice of the cassava, they made cassari or katara, as we would call it in Trinidad, which is a seasoning and a preservative. So that everybody would have learned how to prepare this farine and this, and this um, cassava bread. And um, they would have partake of it. And even today, there are still quite a few people who still use cassava bread, farine, yeah. and the cassari and so on. So today we use cassava in a many different different ways. So I will say definitely cassava in terms of the food, the, 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 mm, the culinary aspect of uh, the cuisine um, would have impacted upon the culture. Second that is corn. Corn is also an Amerindian uh, yeah. food. And over the years it would have developed and, and gone through many different ways of preparation. So corn is another thing that would have impacted in terms of food. Um, and the famous wild meat we have today, of course, uh, the Amerindians didn't have KFC, <laughs> they didn't have all these fancy fast food, so they depended on the wildlife yeah. and fish, yeah. right? They did a lot of fishing and so on. But of course our waterways, our rivers were much larger, cleaner and, and, and things like that. So there was fish in abundance. Um, they bucaded or roasted their meat and their fish. They didn't stew, hardly any stewing or, or no stewing at all, and they boiled the food. So it was really soup kind of food and roasted, roasted yes. um, meat and so on. Um, and today we have the barbecue, so yeah. barbecue would so have the, the, the development of, of that early um, tradition and way of preparing food. In terms of spirituality, in the very early days I think the spirituality had a greater impact. It's, there are still um, traces of it today that we have and others will practice because the spirituality of the first peoples were one that was entwined with nature. Yeah. They were nature worshippers. They believed in God, the great spirit, but no one has ever seen God. So God had God manifested himself, herself, through the forms of nature. Yeah. And so they had different deities for different aspects of nature. The forest, the water, the fire, the wind, and so on. And they would have different ceremonies that they would do. Um, in terms of the culture also, I know we have a lot of street names and sort of tongues and rivers and mountains. Yeah. Names stem from the Amerindian tribes. Of course. And yeah. also um the, the dress and the, the beads and yeah. sorts of so is highly present in carnival and stuff. Carnival, yes, yeah. carnival in, in, in a lot of ways is the, the costumes that you will see, the, the, the amount of feathers, the beads and all these things would have come from that influence of indigenous peoples. Um, today, of course, it's more sophisticated and it's taken to a different le level. But originally, a lot of um, the natural things would have come from the indigenous people and certainly would have an impact on the carnival costumes. Say we want just not a place and not better. Come for all I do. Say we want our lovely country forever.
去后绿园这样子说，在 keep the American culture alive for future generations， 是吧 ？Okay, we have been agitating for quite a while for for some space. From that, as you know, when the mission was established, the Amerindians owned 1,320 acres of land that was the mission given to them for their mission. But under the British, they lost it, which was an illegal act, really. And so we have been lobbying for successive governments for land. Well, recently we have been granted 25 acres. It is nothing compared to 1,000 acres, yeah. but um, it is a start. So with this 25 acres, we plan to. Construct an Amerindian village. There's going to be the heritage village space that is going to be very much in the ways of the early days. Of course, with some up upgrade, um, there will be no outhouses, but um, the setting, the houses, and, and most of the the traditional things will be there. So that is that is what we want to do. In that, we are going to be preserving the traditional housing, the skill of it, and upgrade. The actual visual, they're going to be traditional ways of preparing the cassava. The very same way that they preserve the cassava and preserve the cassava, um, we're going to be doing that. Um, the agriculture, the traditional ways of agriculture, the uh, spirituality, the dances and, and the performing arts, that part of the culture of the first peoples. And the other parts of the village, of course, we want to erect a museum where we will house the artifacts of the first peoples. There's going to be an administrative center, there's going to be a cultural space, a spiritual center, and there's going to be other um, buildings to accommodate for different uses there. So the idea is that when you come to that space, you're going to actually feel a part of how the Amerindians live, actually how they live, and the things they do, they did. And they still do today. We hope that this will create a sense of pride in the people. They will, they will feel a belonging. They will feel a place, just as the other ethnicities feel a place in Trinidad. So we want to recreate that, re-establish that, and at the same time, not only for a showpiece, but it has to be sustainable. So there is going to be occupation and employment for people there of yeah. indigenous descent who will be occupied in various aspects of the culture, preserving and empowering yeah. at the same time. And we are working feverishly at that. Um, so we have started earthworks in terms of cutting roads and doing drains and so on. And we have taken out the platforms for the different buildings. We are now at the point where we would like to start construction maybe next year with the this world. So that people can actually visit and have a first hand experience. We're going to have eco tours into the forest, into the mountain and things like that. Where we can point out the different indigenous streets that we use for different different aspects yeah. of the lifestyle of the indigenous peoples. So, okay, so now that we have, um, you know, talked about the indigenous peoples, it is traditional that you pay some respect to the ancestors. So that I would like to invite, you know, to do a sh small invocation, so that um, a blessing for future, not only for our community, but for your efforts in promoting the indigenous and other aspects of culture. Okay. So that in the indigenous spirituality, we call upon the Great Spirit, who in the Karine or Karen language is called Tamushi, in the Lokono or Arawak is called Adayali, and Wachinachi is the Great Father of the Heavens. So we pay respect to the earth, and awaken the earth and the heavens. And we call upon the heavens of the ancestors of the Karine, Arawak, Tamushi, Adayali, Wachinachi,
When they began our civilization process nearly 6,000 years back, the first piece of a complex and unique puzzle of Trinidad and Tobago's culture was laid by this community. We owe a lot to this very resilient group who continues to play an important part in the makeup of our diverse society and will do so for generations to come. The next adventure of Caps and Paradise promises to be just as exciting. I thank you for viewing.